This video is part of the Ultimate Swagger Tools course. Check the link in the description to learn more. In step 1, we'll look at how you can import an open API specification into Swagger Inspector and use the new tool to test the APIs that you had written. First, you go to the website swagger.io. Once you are there, click on the tools menu and then select Swagger Inspector. This is going to load the home page of the Swagger Inspector tool. Once you are there, you can click the Try Swagger Inspector button in order to open the tool in your browser. Notice that the version we are using is inspector.swagger.io that is a web application. From next time onwards, you can directly go to this tool by going to inspector.swagger.io. Once you are there, you can use this tool in order to test the APIs that you had written using Swagger Editor or Swagger Hub. Next, let us get familiarized with the UI by checking the each of the components that is present in this tool. First, in the top middle, we have a text box where we can enter the path of our API. Here we enter the different paths followed by the different options. Here we have get, post, put, delete and so on. So you need to select the particular operation followed by the specific path here. Next, we have the request section where we can provide various inputs such as parameters, authentication headers and body. Under the parameters, we can use this to pass the query parameters and other information. Next, under the authentication and headers, we select the different type of authentication method as supported by your API. Once you select this, then you can enter the different credentials as per the scheme that you have selected. For instance, for basic authentication, you need to key in the username and password. Similarly, if you scroll down, in case you have headers to be passed for the request, then you can add it at the bottom. Next, in case your request such as the put or post expects any input, then you can pass it using the body. Next, once you minimize the request, then we have the next section as the response. Once you have entered the API details, selected the operation, have given the input request and then send button is going to execute it against our API server. And then the response is going to get displayed over the window present here. It has a minor option where you can change the theme to dark or the white. Finally, at the right hand side, we have a couple of sections where it is related to the storing the history and making collections. In the history tab is going to show you the list of API and operations that you have executed. Since we have not executed any operations so far, currently it is blank. Finally, we have the section at the top in order to sign in. The advantage of sign in is that it's going to store you all the histories that you have done and you can also create a new API specifications out of those APIs. All those will get stored under your account. Let's go ahead and log in using my GitHub. Once I do with GitHub, it's going to log in with my credentials and it's going to show my all details present under my account. You can notice now at the right hand side, under the history, I have various APIs that I have executed before. It is going to show you the date and time I had executed, the type of operation, followed by the path. Next, let us look at the different ways you can use a Swagger Inspector to trigger the API calls. First. We have the top middle section where you can enter the actual path followed by the operation. For example, in our case, we had HTTP colon slash slash localhost followed by the port number followed by API v1 slash courses. This was our complete URL for the courses. And then you select the various options such as get, post, put and delete. In this way, you are going to enter all these details manually. This is the first approach. In the second approach, you can go to the option definition and then you can upload the YAML file that you had exported from your Swagger. Notice that this is going to be an open API specification file using the YAML format. If you remember, we had created this file by exporting from the Swagger editor within Swagger Hub in the past section. Once you select this file, you can click open. Then it's going to show you all the details that is present inside this specific YAML file. Here it shows a title followed by the list of servers. In our case, we had development and then staging servers. Second, we have all the APIs and corresponding operations being listed down. In the YAML file that we had imported, we had two paths, namely courses 
second set of being a courses slash course id for the courses path we have get and post operation whereas for the individual course item we have get put followed by delete in order to execute this any of these operations you can directly click on that link then it's going to populate the operation followed by the url notice that it has pulled up these informations from this api specification document that we have uploaded once you have decided the approach to follow to execute the next step is to go ahead and, and set all these values and then trigger the api call and see how is the output as per the request that you have given let's see that next In step two, let us go ahead and prepare for the execution of one of the API methods using the Swagger inspector. To begin with, my intention here is to execute the get operation of the courses path so that I can retrieve the, all the courses available in the CMS system. To achieve this, I have selected my get method and then followed by the URL. Since in our case, the port number is 5000, I'm going to change it as localhost colon 5000 followed by api slash v1 slash courses of course sort by is an optional parameter so for now i am going to ignore it in case you want to add it then you can add the query parameter over here as well once it is done we can execute by clicking on the send button before you execute the send request you have to make sure that your api server service is running properly in this case you can see that our service is still listening at the port 5000. Coming back to the Swagger inspector, we are, have everything ready. Get operation followed by the URL followed by the list of parameters. Since for the current get operation, we don't have any request body, currently it's blank. Let's minimize the history section and then click on the send request. At the bottom, we can see certain errors, network error, certificate problem or CORS error. So it means that the request has been terminated, it has not executed. The reason being the third option here, CORS error. The request service does not allow request from other domains. The reason for this error is that we are triggering the request from a browser application to an application that is hosted in this machine. Our service is running in this specific PC, whereas the request is coming from a browser. So because of this, there is a cross origin resource sharing shortly CORS. Since it is not allowed, basically the browser is going to block the request. In order to overcome this, we need to install one of the extension known as Swagger Inspector extension. In the next segment, let us go ahead and install the Swagger Inspector extension and see how is the behavior of this specific tool once that extension is installed. Let's see that next. In step 3, let us see how we can install Swagger Inspector extension and then execute the operations in Swagger Inspector tool. To begin with, in order to install the extension, you go to the extensions dialog. Since the current browser is Firefox, I am going to install the extension that is specific to Firefox. In case you are using other browsers such as Chrome, then you can go to the respective marketplace and install Swagger Inspector extension. I go to options, followed by extensions and themes, followed by the extensions. Here let us go on and search for the extension name using Swagger Inspector extension. It's going to, to take to the home page of the Swagger extension where you have a choice to install it. I go ahead and click add to Firefox. You can see from the left hand side, this extension allows the Swagger inspector to bypass CORS and security scheme related browser restrictions for API inspection. Let us go on and add to the Firefox. Once this is done, we can close all these windows and if required, you can reload it. Once the browser is reloaded, we can go ahead and execute our operation again. Let me minimize the history section followed by the specific YAML file. Then I select get courses. Since the port number is changed, I'm going to change as 5000 followed by removal of my query parameter. Since our get operation doesn't require any further inputs, I'm going to click on the send. 
However, this time we get a different response namely 401 unauthorized. If you remember, we had implemented our API using basic authentication. Hence, our get operation is expecting a username and password for the basic authentication. To set these values, we go to the request section followed by the authentication and headers. Among the authentication schemes, we select basic authentication. Here we are supposed to give the username and password. As explained in the previous section, since we have only the skeleton code, we have not yet implemented the business logic. Hence I am going to just leave them blank. However, when you have implemented your API server, then you are going to have username password to be sent in order to trigger the request. Once I have chosen the basic authentication, let me go and send this request. If we minimize this, we can see now we have got a response of our request. The status being 200 OK followed by our actual response. In our case, the response is going to be an array of courses. This is going to return a sample value as per the specification that we had created before. Similarly, you can go ahead and choose the other operations and pass the informations and finally trigger the send. And then it's going to send this request to our API server and then it's going to fetch the results. Also, if you come back to our API server that is running in the Visual Studio code, we can also see the logs being printed. Here we can see that our API call get courses has been triggered. To see another example, let's go ahead and execute another get method for the individual course item. Here we have courses slash course ID that represents an individual course ID. Once I select the get operation, it's going to populate both the operations and the path. Notice the presence of a parameter here. So we need to define that parameter using the parameter section. The parameter in our case is course ID, followed by a value. Let's give a sample value as 1. Once we do this, let's go on and click on the send button. In this case, it's going to trigger the operation get using these parameters for this specific path. And we get the response as status 200 OK followed by a specific course operation whose course ID is 1. In similar manner, you can go ahead and select any of the operations from this combo box and give the respective values. You can also choose the definitions directly from here and then trigger it. Finally, let's get back to the history section and see what happened in this case. The history tab has captured all the details that we have executed before. We have the individual course and then set of courses where we have triggered the get operations. Let's see in the next segment how we can make better use of this history by combining multiple operations and creating a new API definitions. Let's look at that in the next segment. In this final step of Swagger Inspector, we will see how we can create new API definitions from various operations that we have executed before. In the path segment, we had executed some of the operations such as get for individual courses, get for complete course and so on. Suppose you have executed these operations by entering these API details here or you have executed using multiple different files, then all this gets split up into multiple entries. If you are interested to select all these entries and create a new definitions, then you can do so using the Swagger Inspector UI. For instance, suppose I want to create a new API definition containing only these two requests. After selecting the list of operations, I have got two choices. Either I can add it to a new collection or I can create a new API definition. By adding to a collection, then it's going to create a new collection and have these two as the entries. Let's see what happens if you go and click on the add to collection. It's going to prompt you to enter a name. In case you already have a collection, then you can go ahead and select. Otherwise, you can create a new collection. Let's say get methods and then click add to collection. Once done, if you go to the collections section, you can see a new entry called a get methods. Once you expand this, you can see the list of operations that has been grouped under this collection. This way, you can create a collection and group all the operations that are in interest to you. The second choice you have is to create a new API definition from the scratch. Once you select the same two operations, instead of adding to a collection, once we create API definitions, then it's going to pick these two operations 
and then create a new open api specification document itself currently we had selected these two operations and then selected create api definition is going to prompt a message that it has successfully created the api definition and that file is getting hosted under your swagger hub account if you go to the swagger hub then it's going to show you a new open api document that was created based on the set of operations that you have selected it will show you a dialog to enter the details for the newly created api it's going to have some default values you are free to go ahead and change these values let's say in my case i want to make it as get methods api and then the version i want to start with 1.0 the visibility is public, the owner is code with Praveen and then I go out and import this open API. Once you do this, Swagger Hub is going to pull all the information that you have selected and create a new API document. Here it has created a new API document namely get methods API. Notice that the version is selected as 1.0 and it has automatically created this open API document. Notice that it has created a new path for individual course ID as well as another path for overall courses. If you now go to the visual editor, then it's going to show you the details as per the API documentation. It's going to have a default set of values such as title and description. You can come back to the info section and then change all these values as per your requirement. Using this approach, you can select all the operation of interest to you and create a new API definition. It's going to save you time while creating a new documentation. Finally, if you go back to the Swagger Hub and then go back to the My Hub page, it's going to show you the newly created API at the top.